Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Parker White. I am the education coordinator here at CMC Arts. We are very excited today. Uh, we are having today Kina Fleming. She um, is born and raised here in St. Croix, and she's joining us today to talk about uh, the shoe industry. Um, she is part of our Exploring Arch Careers Pathways. Uh, this is the first in our series, um, and this was supported by St. Croix Foundation through the CARE Grant. So again, we're excited to have Kina on the line today telling us and sharing us about shoes. We do know that some people, um, unfortunately, were not able to join us today because of the WAPA outage on island, but we are recording this so that students will be able to go back and watch this video and then participate in the art challenge that Kina will be giving us at the end here. All right, thank you again, Kina, for joining us today. Great, thank you for having me, um, very exciting. So um, as uh, Jess mentioned, I um, am from St. Croix, born and raised, and I've always been into art, um, drawing, painting. Um, I've always had kind of a, a want to design shoes. When I was really young, my, my mom, who was a French and Spanish teacher at Good Hope for many years, um, did a program where we moved to Paris and that's kind of when I fell in love with shoe design. I just didn't know there was a place to do that or a school to go to. So I kind of just did my own um, drawings and designs and school projects kind of revolved around shoes. And when I went to college, I went to an art school in Virginia and I had a professor who asked me what I wanted to do for a living. And I told him that I wanted to be a shoe designer. And he said, why didn't you go to FIT? which is the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City, which I had never heard about. And so the very next year I withdrew from the school where I was currently studying art and moved to New York and started studying footwear design. And I was there for four years. Um, it was a very hard program, learned a lot. Um, it's amazing the amount of work that goes behind designing shoes. It's very technical, so, you know, if you have shoes that give you blisters, that means they weren't made correctly. So there's a lot that goes behind them. Um, and I really love doing it just because there's an endless amount of things you can do. You're always inspired by things around you. Um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about making shoes and shoe design. So um, this picture up at the top in the wood is called a shoe last. So what that does is uh, it de determines the shape of the shoe. So you're the toe shape, if it's a pointy toe or a square toe or a round toe, it also determines how high the shoe is. So how high the heel will be. Um, and this kind of gives all the technical measurements of the foot and the way the foot bends so that when you do walk, the shoe moves with you without giving you blisters, for example. Um, so there's these last uh, magicians really that are, they have all of these technical numbers and measurements that they're able to mold this foot, if you will, um, so that you can build a shoe around. So here's some of the measurements that's really important just so you know the anatomy of the foot and the way things need to be held on and, and the space and allowance that need to be given to your shoes when you're making shoes. So what you do is with pattern making, since usually when you're if you're making a pattern for clothing, it's gonna be a flat piece of fabric and it kind of just hangs on your body. But with shoes, because you're dealing with a foot, which is more 3D, you have to basically take a 3D object and turn the pattern into a 2D object. So what you do is you tape the last and you draw the pattern of the shoe that you want on top of the tape. And then you cut it off and then you put it down on a flat piece of paper and that gives you a flat pattern. So from the flat pattern, you know, this is kind of an example here, you have all these flat pieces that you then trace out onto your leather or whatever material you're using to make your shoes. And then you can sew it. So you have a kind of a sewn shoe together here. And then you go through this process that's called lasting. So you have your leather shoe upper and you pull it over this last that we talked about really, really tight. And then you stick it together at the bottom with these nails and glue and everything gets hardened. And when it's dried, you sand everything down, all the extra leather, and that way you can attach your heel or whatever the bottom of the shoe is going to be. And then you remove the last and you have this 3D hard form of the shoe. So that's a very abridged way 
of um, describing how to make a shoe. There's a lot more involved in it, but it's, you know, basically that's how you make a shoe. And as far as designing shoes, there's obviously endless ways of designing shoes. So sometimes, um, for example, I work with a specific customer and I have to design shoes that is targeted towards a specific set of customers. So if I'm designing for a group of women, you know, 30 to 40, there's a specific type of shoe that's more appropriate if I'm designing a shoe for somebody who's 16 to 25. So you always have to kind of be aware of who you're designing for. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples of some things that I've designed for customers and some things that I've designed for myself just for fun. Um, so one of the things that we do a lot in um, the industry for commercial design is following trends. So you're designing things that are relevant to what's happening in the market because people might, you know, you might be on Instagram and you see celebrities wearing certain shoes and then you, you really want to get a pair for yourself because you like the way that they look and you're seeing them all the time on Instagram. You're seeing a certain style. And what happens is the designers will have you know, very, very expensive shoes, you know, thousands of dollar shoes. And then those kind of set what's happening in the trend market. And then slowly they start to trickle down into more commercial brands like Steve Madden, for example, that are more affordable to mass market. So they'll have similar designs that you can get from high end brands. So one of the ways of doing that is kind of looking at everything that's in the market. And instead of copying exactly what you see, because at that point, you know, it doesn't, you're not really designing anything. You're just copying exactly what you see. So you always want to challenge yourself to interpret things or try and find another way to represent what that same look is without copying it exactly. So for example, I really like the toe shape of the sandal. It looks very different and unique. It's not like a normal round or square toe shape. You know, it has this kind of point to it, but it's still open toe. So it feels really new and different. Um, I love the pink shoe with the two different colors because that you can do a lot of cool color blocking here. And I love the strap techniques of this yellow shoe. <clears throat> so I kind of combined these three elements into one idea and sketched really quickly something that would kind of incorporate all three of those ideas together. So I sent this sketch to my team in China and then they make the shoe. So you can see from the start, none of them look exactly like the end result, but they have the same kind of essence or idea. So like the trend of having really, really skinny straps are, you know, we're seeing a lot of that right now. So this was the idea here. <clears throat> Um, another thing that we have to do in design a lot is when you sketch and you send to your technical team. So I have some teams in China and some teams in Brazil. There is a lot of pattern making that needs to be done. So sometimes when you sketch something on a piece of paper, it's 2D. And then when they have to, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a little bit of a cough. <coughs> hmm. Um, when they have to make the pattern, sometimes things change when it goes from 2D to 3D. So we do a lot of cutting and retaping and redrawing and remaking patterns. So this is a boot that I was working on that's in the middle of being corrected. The patterns are being in the middle of being corrected. So you can see it was originally sketched with the buckle down at the bottom. And then when we saw it in person, it just looked weird. It just didn't look right. So we cut the straps and repositioned everything, retaped everything. And then we gave it back to the pattern maker and the pattern maker corrects the pattern and then remakes the sample. And sometimes you're really lucky that you sketch something and you get a first proto back and it looks exactly like what you wanted. And it's always very, very exciting. And it doesn't happen often, but it does sometimes happen. And it's, it is truly a very exciting moment because you have much less work to do. So this is um, one of my <clears throat> favorite boots that I worked on that um, came out the first try really, really well. So that happens once in a while. <coughs> so
So another way of um, designing that I come up with ideas sometimes is I'll pull inspiration from anything. It could be uh, a table, it could be a vase, it could be a painting, it could be a shell. <clears throat> so this is um, kind of a combination of things. I liked the bag handle has like wood and metal wrapped in it. I love the different colors of the wood in this heel here. So sometimes I'll do little combination designs, do these quick little hand sketches just to get my idea out. And then I'll draw them bigger with more details just so I can see what I'm envisioning in my head. <clears throat> and um, here's another example. I think one of the things that makes me a designer as a designer stand out more when I'm designing in New York is my use of color. And I think that growing up here in St. Croix has given me a different perspective. You know, New Yorkers stereotypically wear a lot of black um, and I am always known to wear a lot of color. And that's something that I am just drawn to from being here um, and being inspired by the colors and the beauty around me all the time. So definitely use of color <clears throat> is very important. Um, again, like anything, like this is, a, you know, a, a rock sculpture that I really love the lines in and the painting in the background I thought was really beautiful and kind of combining those two looks together to make a shoe. So I turned that rock sculpture into a heel and then the pattern for the upper um, is mimicking what the painting is. So um, that's it that I have to show you for designs and um, I wanted to kind of come up with an idea to challenge you guys to design a shoe. As I explained in a couple different ways, there's really no wrong answer. There's tons of different ways that you can design a shoe. Um, I just think the most important thing is to not um, copy things because there are so many different combinations. And if you really stop and try and challenge yourself to think about something really unique, um, then I think you'll really impress yourself because I have been doing this for a very long time. And still now when I come up with new designs, it still makes me really excited. And when I get to see them from sketch all the way through to people wearing them on the streets, it still makes me really happy. And um, I never knew growing up here that <clears throat> you could go to school to be a shoe designer. And um, I'm so glad that I did, and it's a lot of work, but I get to travel a lot and I get a lot of free shoes, which is always great. Um, so I wanted to challenge you to design your very own shoe, but inspired by carnival season. So um, here's just a quick example. Uh, it doesn't have to be literal. It doesn't have to be like the shoes that you would wear if you were in carnival. It can just be inspired by the costumes. You can use feathers, you can use sequins, you can use beads, um, you can use colors. You don't have to use any of those things. Just something that feels really bright and festive, um, something that is meaningful to you for carnival season, whether it's you know something around the beach, anything that you're, you have like tradition wise with your family around the holidays. Um, so I just want you to come up with a really fun design and it doesn't need to be practical. It can be crazy. It can be anything that you want. It can be however high you want it to be, whatever heel shape. Um, one of the things that I like to do in the beginning of every season is go on to you can go on to Saks Fifth Avenue. They have one of the biggest shoe stores um, in New York. They have their own zip code for their shoes. So online, they have a ton of pictures of shoes you can get inspired by. Um, and then you can just add your own personal touch to it. So that's the, that's the design challenge. All right, so that is gonna be the design challenge. You girls are going to have, um, and anybody else too, again, we are missing people because of the um, the outage today on island. So Kina's challenge to us is to create a carnival shoe 
um, inspired by Carnival. Again, you don't have to be practical, she said, um, and um, capturing the essence of Carnival. And that's gonna be due December the 30th. And on the 31st, um, Kina and, uh, um, will be with me and we'll announce the winner uh, for the contest. That winner is gonna get a $150 gift certificate that can be used um, either to purchase your own pair of shoes there on St. Croix at one of the stores, uh, St. Croix sh uh, shoe stores, or you can use that same $150 to purchase art supplies at Frame Up um, here on St. Croix. Uh, we are also doing a $75 um, uh, raffle for the people that are on the Zoom call. We'll put your name in the hat and one of you will be the lucky winner for the $75 uh, gift certificate, again, for a shoe store or for Frame Up. And this is all being sponsored again. Thank you so much to St. Croix Foundation um, and their CARE grant. Um, and we really appreciate having Kina on today. Um, can we take a few questions, Kina? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so <laughs> girls that are on the line, if you have any questions at all, you can think. Um, I definitely have a few too. So Kina, as you're doing your um, drawings, and I know a lot of people have moved to using computers and softwares, do you normally <laughs> sketch first or do you go to a computer? How do you like to do things? So I'm a little old school. I still like drawing by hand. Um, it's easier for me to get my ideas out faster. Um, but some of the younger designers that I work with are more comfortable drawing on a program called Illustrator. Um, so I'm, I'm fine either way. I can use both. Um, sometimes it's just faster me, for me to use by hand. And sometimes there's just a little bit more personality, I think, in sketches when you draw them by hand. A lot of times when you draw them on the computer, the sketches look exactly the same from person to person. So you can't even tell the difference of like, you know, what the personality is or kind of like some of that extra emotion that you have in or stylistic, you know, representation that you have when you sketch by hand. Um, so I, I don't like it as much just because you lose some of that. But for technical purposes, it um, is easy for the pattern maker to use programs like that. Okay, so you normally you're sketching and then you're putting it into the computer program itself. So you've talked about the pattern makers. So can you, um, so from this position for um, shoe design, there sounds like there's a lot of other um, careers that are out there in the shoe design <coughs> and the footwear business. Um, so can you yeah. name some of the different positions, if you will? Um, you're you're the head of your um, of your department here, um, and you're working currently for Dillard's, correct? Yes, yes. So I work for um, private label brands for Dillard's and I head the Antonio Milani team. Um, and it is a huge, there's so many moving parts. So, you know, in the design world, um, we obviously do everything from, you know, research, sketching, designing, material development to fitting production kind of end. But um, we send all of our sketches and technical work to our teams overseas and the teams overseas are huge. There's somebody specifically that deals with leather development. There's somebody specifically that deals with fabric development. There's somebody that does fitting. There's somebody that does pattern making. And then when you get into the factories, it's even more involved. There's one person that does stitching. There's one person that does cutting. There's one person that does sewing. So there's a lot of different steps behind it. But in the shoe world, if you're like not overseas, not working in the factories um, and not in the design portion of things. There's also the people that deal with kind of more of the pricing side, um, you know, and then the material development is a huge portion of things. Right now, I don't have a material team, so I do it all on my own, which is a whole separate job. But most companies that I've worked at in the past, there is a separate material development team. So what you do if you're really into leathers or fabrics or snakes or glitters or anything, any kind of material you can think of, um, th that's really what you work with all day long. You work with the tanneries to make sure that the leather has the right finish for what you need, whether it needs to be thicker for a boot or thinner for a dress shoe. Um, you work with different um, you know, embossing techniques so you can have a cow skin that looks like a crocodile or a snake or a zebra. Um, so there's a ton of different developments that are happening in the leather world and they're always evolving. And it's, it's really amazing when you go to the leather shows 
in Italy or in New York, the amount of things that people can do with leather now, it's a whole separate art world in itself. And um, my knowledge in the leather department is, is very minimal. I know how to ask for what I want, but there, I don't know how to get it there. So the teams that work with leather are really, really amazing. And that technique is definitely forever evolving. It's really, it's really cool. <clears throat> So you keep talking about teams. So it sounds to me that this is definitely a position if you're going to get into the um, fashion, into shoes, you definitely have to be somebody that can work well, I'm guessing with yeah. others and communicate with yeah. others well, that you're not isolated all by yourself. Um, no, position. no. As much as I'd love to be in a room drawing shoes by myself, sometimes it's definitely, um, it's definitely a team job, um, specifically where I'm working now, since I'm working for a private label for Dillard's, I always have to make sure that what I'm designing is what Dillard's is going to want to put in their stores. So if I'm designing a collection of shoes and Dillard's doesn't want any of it, then I need to start over because at the end of the day, they're the only customer. So I have to make sure that I'm making them happy, that I'm filling in the voids that they want. So, you know, I can design a really crazy, beautiful shoe that I feel very passionate about, but <clears throat> it might not sell well in the stores for Dillard. So I have to make sure that I'm communicating with them what my designs are, and then I'm making sure that everybody's happy and then the team knows what they're supposed to be doing. So uh, there is, I'm guessing, a marketing department too that you're working with and talking to the marketing department as you're developing your ideas also. Is that one of the other components? Yeah. Yeah, dealing with um, marketing for sure. Pricing is a huge thing. Um, dealing with pricing is always really challenging because as the designer, you always want, you know, more is more. You want the nicest leather, you want the prettiest finishes, you want the biggest jewels and you, you know, want it to look a certain way. And then when you get pricing involved, it's like, okay, well, you know, this costs $12 a pair for the shoe, which means it's too expensive. So then you have to start removing things or finding different alternatives, you know, using plastics instead of resins. And there's, you know, there's a lot of conversation that goes around with the cost of certain types of leathers, for example. So there's definitely like everybody is communicating and holding hands and there's no surprises in the end. It's, it's definitely very like, thoroughly communicated all the way through to the very end. And so with the pandemic going on, Kina, has a lot changed in the industry um, with the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I used to travel to China about four times a year, and I haven't been there in over two years now. Um, but it's also has its own challenges because we, everything is very you know, tangible, like we're working with materials and leathers and color matching. And, you know, if you're, you want to make sure that this, for example, the shoe that's on the screen, you want to make sure that the pink feather matches the pink satin, but you're not seeing it in person. It's hard to know how things look together in the right light. So that's definitely been a challenge. Um, and correcting protos over pictures instead of in person has been a challenge. Um, just because things always look different in pictures, depending on the angle or the lighting or anything like that. So it's hard. It's definitely hard. Um, you know, there's been a lot of issues with not to get like too into that side, <coughs> but um, with just like receiving products and pricing and things like that with overseas. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. No, you're good. Um, thank you for answering all the questions. Girls, do you have some questions too that are on the line? Does anybody have a specific question about for Akina about maybe how she got started um, education wise or, the, or anything about the process or even the, um, or the art challenge that Kina's given us? So Kina, I'm guessing growing up, you, you did a lot of draw. I'm sorry, Tasia, you got a question? Go ahead. Un unmute and tell, ask. No questions? Okay. Um, oh, and she got your sister there too. All right. So um, growing up, I'm guessing, Kina, you did a lot of drawing probably um, in school. Um, do you have any advice as far as um, as being young artist and, and how to, um, you know, continue their, their art um, 
uh, continue to making art at, at their young age and pursuing this as a potential career, because as I'm sure with you, I know you've got very supportive parents, but oftentimes we hear that, you know, the arts is not a, um, is not a viable career. So is there anything that you'd like to share with them um, as far as that goes? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think my biggest advice is to just to keep drawing. I mean, like I said, I wanted to do shoe design for a very long time, um, but didn't know that you can go to school to do it. And so I just went to a college to do fine arts just because I knew that that was what I was good at, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career. And it wasn't until I met a professor that kind of geared me in the right direction. So I think if there's something that you want to do in your career, just to keep trying and keep talking to people and eventually you'll find somebody that um, will give you a good suggestion or help you along or um, kind of push you in the direction of where you need to go. So just keep doing it. Great advice. Thank you again, Kina. We really appreciate you coming on and then uh, just opening your eyes to the, the world and possibility of the shoe industry as a, um, a potential career option. Again, um, many of us probably put on our shoes each day. You go to the you go to the store, you buy a pair of shoes, but you don't think about all the different people and all the um, all the different um, potential careers that are out there in this um, this business. So thank you, Kina, for giving us some insight and thank you for this great art challenge. Again, you have till December the 30th to uh, email me at jessica at cmcarts.org and I'll send you guys the email with that again. Um, and you have till the 30th to design your carnival inspired shoe. Uh, and Kina will take a look-see and we'll pick a winner here um, and again, thank you to St. Croix Foundation. So everybody have a great uh, holiday break, a great uh, Christmas, winter break. And um, thank you again. Thank you. Okay, right. thank you. I'm gonna stop, are you sure you wanna stop recording?